All right, so this is our first demo on topography, and we're going to go ahead and uh, use Mount Rainier as a project. As you can see, I'm going to use the satellite overlay tool here to kind of find exactly where I want on the map, make sure all the features are in it that I'm looking for, and then I'm going to turn that back down once I'm done using it. And we're pretty much ready to start making a layer. So this is one of those things we're going to build from the bottom to the top. So we're going to call this layer bottom and we're going to go find that topography feature, which is in land. And then there's another subcategory called topography and then a feature all elevation contour fills. We're going to be using that thing over and over and over again. So this is the first of many layers with that same feature in it, as you can see. So we're going to position the map a little bit more and just get it how we want it because we want a lot of layers. So the definition of those layers has to be showing visually. Now, something that I didn't do in this video is turn on the all elevation contour lines, not fills, but lines. Those actually can help you see a little bit better, but I was able to do this just fine. Turn up the map scale if you want more detail. That's gonna be a pretty big thing for you to be able to get the amount of layers you need if you're doing 10 plus layers. So this is looking pretty good in my book. Now it's time for me to show you the topography feature. So as you can see, the elevation range there at the top, there's a min and a max value and a slider. Well, wherever you are on the map, zoomed in, zoomed out, it's going to have a data range. And so right now, oh, you just saw it change when I zoomed in, zoomed out there. The data range will change, meaning that's what is going to be accessible to you as the user as you're going about this. So right now what we're doing is we're figuring out where we want to be for our data range. Because if we have 30 layers that we'd like to do, then we need enough data range to be able to achieve that. Now that we have our map where we want it, we can go ahead and lock it. And that actually goes for the satellite overlay as well. We can turn that off so that it's not kind of overlaying over the map and we can just see the solid colors that we need to see. On the left hand panel, you'll see this elevation range at the top here with the slider. The parameter on the left is the bottom, like the minimum, and then the parameter on the right is for the maximum. We're just going to be doing minimum. So as we slide it up, you'll see in the studio that the layers underneath will start disappearing and you'll see kind of like that PNG background. That's kind of what we're going for to find like the bottom layer that we're going to establish from to create all the other layers. We're going to zoom out just a tad here so that we can get a little bit more on that first layer so that we're happy with it. Now, mind you, this first layer, we'll we're just going to do a solid piece because that's going to be what you'll need to start your map. But we do need to know for the next layer, what are we going to be setting our elevation to? And we did end up breaking what we thought our locked map would be. We had to unlock it and zoom and pan around a little bit just to find it. And that's just part of how this goes. So enjoy the process. Once you get this thing set for the bottom, you can base your layers off that and it gets much easier. So just hang in there. So now that we've figured out what our second layer is going to be, we can just make this layer solid. And that's why you see it turn green there. And now I'm going to go ahead and create a different layer. This will be our second layer. And let's just name it what it's going to be, which is 520 meters. And we will need to select the land category and the topography subcategory and the all elevation contour fills, which is what we're gonna use every single time, like I had said before. What's really cool is the left-hand panel will stack it right on top, so every time you add a layer, it'll be in the right order that you need to have it physically. So here we're going to change the elevation to 500. Let's do 500 instead of 520. It's just a nicer number that we can add to. And then we'll change the whole color, so override to this teal here. And now you have the top layer and you have the bottom layer. So we'll save this project. Somehow satellite overlay got turned on again. And now we are ready to add a third layer. Layers panel here, we'll have bottom and 520. 
We could add another layer, but before we do that, let's fix this to 500 since we decided to do that. And now we're just gonna go in intervals. So 500, 600, 700, or whatever you wanna do, but this is what we're doing for our project. So we're gonna select the same exact features as before, all elevation contour fills. Since it's at the top, that's why you see all of those layers all again. So we need to adjust this. This one we set to 600 for the layer name, and that's what we're gonna turn it to. We need to give it its own color. And you can see that there might be an issue here because the bottom layers have been created. So we should see three layers here. So something weird is happening and we might have to investigate. So let's look. So 500, we named it a teal color. And let's see here. It looks like we need to, oh, we forgot to turn on map scale. So we were actually not defined enough. And therefore at this zoom level, it caused an issue. So let's just turn on satellite overlay real quick and make sure. But turning map scale up basically increases the definition and now you can see as I zoom in and out, you can kind of see those layers there. So as you can see, this takes a little bit of finessing, but it does get easier. Uh, we're gonna check the bottom here. Okay, it's green. And then this middle layer is teal. And then we have this blue, which is the third layer. So now we can turn off satellite overlay. Everything seems to be on track now and we can just start adding more layers. So 700, 800, 900. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we ended up with a 30 layered map and these are all about a hundred apart. Uh, turned out beautifully. I can't wait to see it. Uh, you might not even see it on the screen as well as you're gonna see it in preview here. So let's go ahead and click preview. Remember we use some of the colors multiple times in different layers, so it can be a little deceiving, but you'll see here, there's plenty of the same colors used over and over again in different layers. And you have all these layers here. Remember if the border is touching the land, you need to make sure the border is the same color because when you outline it, it will do that nice weld and mix together. If it's not touching the border like this one, you do not have to worry about it, but I made them pretty anyways. So on the layers panel on the left here, we're just gonna do a review. Make sure all of them are vectorized, yes. Outline uh, and then SVG. So I'm just gonna scroll through here real quick and make sure that each one of these has that. And oop, I missed one. So yep, make sure that you always do that. And everything looks good now. We uh, have all of our vectorization set up properly. We've reviewed the layers. It looks like they go from large to small. So we can just click next. This is a layer summary. So you can review it once more before you charge the credits and we can export and I'll meet you over at the laser. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut all of our MDF. So make sure you sort all of your MDF jobs in one go. Mine was every other layer for most of the layers so that I just grabbed every other layer and sorted it and then we did acrylic for the rest of the layers. Next thing we need to do is I took all these things off the, the laser and I had labeled them, each of their elevations, and I put transfer tape on the ones that need transfer tape on it, see the ones that don't have any attachment to the borders there. And now I'm going through and cleaning it all up, taking off the excess material that we're not gonna be using in the process of assembling the map. And once we're all done with that, now we're gonna spread it all out and just basically look at all the numbers that I wrote on each of those pieces and sort them as if you're going to build the map, like stack it up from bottom to top. You see there I flipped it over. And so now we're gonna use each of the bottom pieces and put glue on it. And basically you're doing like a reverse flop. So you'll glue the bottom piece, flop it on the next piece. And basically it just makes it really easy. So. Now you see me cleaning some of these MDF pieces and that's just because when I was cleaning them the first time, I had some tape on them and so I didn't get them all the way. So I'll go around and clean clean up that glue residue kind of stuff. But I just love that white MDF and it's really nice. So I love that contrast. And as it gets to the top here where I stop needing the border uh, permanently, I still use it for like the first parts of the tape transfer here. And you'll want that border for alignment. You align it with the rest of the shape and then the tape that's running across, then you, you'll have that exact placement of where you need it, as you can see there. But I did ditch this eventually because the shape was so evident to me that I barely needed it. So you'll see I'm kind of ditching 
uh, the borders off to the side there that I was just going to basically use for alignment. But I would recommend always to use them if you can, especially if it's your first time. But this actually went really great. I'm really happy with how it ended up looking and there you go. So now we need to build a nice frame for this. I chose Home Depot's Poplar. Uh, it's like a one by six board. I actually cut it down quite a bit. So I think this is close to three inches or three and a half inches. And um, yeah, I gave cut them each 30 degrees and put a bunch of wood glue on there. And I used this awesome strap clamp. Now there's only four clamp corner pieces to it, but it worked great for doing a hexagon. And here you go, here's the final product. If you'll see the bottom there, I didn't actually build that project in this video, but that's the first time uh, that I actually built a huge multi-layered map using our new beta feature for topography. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this is encouraging to you to try out topography in Laser Map Maker.